Last time on Dragon Ball Z. But the second part will be available on Saturday, May 13th, unless I goof up real, real bad. Oh shit, what day is it? In fifth place, we're highlighting openings with a simple yet all-important purpose. To get you ready for some insane, action-packed nonsense. If you've seen anything on my channel, you know that I care a lot about symbolism and cinematography, but there's equal value and effort in the art of building hype through great editing. Now, any series can focus on this, be it about lawyers, robots, or weird metaphysical magical girls, but the most common place you're gonna see a hype OP is in front of a shonen battle anime. And over the years, these shows have gotten very good at this. The latest incarnations of mainstays like Naruto Shippuden, Pokemon Sun and Moon, and Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans have been at this for years, but their showings in 2016 are no less impressive for all the experience they have. And powerhouse newcomer My Hero Academia really brought it with a straightforward but inspiring opener from Porno Graffiti. Of course, it's not just the battle shows that thrive on hype, it's just as vital to sports series like All Out and Tiger Mask W. And for three years now, there's been no sports series better at this than Haikyuu, which really came out swinging with both great direction and incredible action in Hikari Are, the intro to its best season yet, Karasuno vs. Shira Torizawa. And man, did I ever want to give this slot to Haikyuu. I adore burnout syndromes, and on top of everything else, this OP is packed to the brim with powerful symbolism. But in spite of all of that, it couldn't get me half as hyped as the raw intensity of the Drifters opening, Gospel of the Throttle by Minutes Till Midnight. It's not often that you see American musicians lend their talents to anime productions. When you do, it's often big, well-known older bands like Duran Duran, Oasis, Frank Sinatra, yes, The Bangles, Pat Metheny Group, or Savage Garden. And it's usually at the end of a JoJo episode, too. Gospel of the Throttle sounds like it could very well be one of those. It's an intense, head-banging classic rock number that would have been right at home on a radio station in the 70s. Even the name, Minutes Till Midnight, sounds like a contemporary of ACDC and Van Halen, but it's actually a one-man indie band that started, as far as I can tell, in 2011 and has fewer Twitter followers than I did when I was a game journalist. And that makes it all the more incredible that Hood's Entertainment even managed to find this song, which is not only great, but also perfectly embodies the anarchic spirit and playful brutality of Drifters. More than any other OP song this year, this is the one that makes me want to sing along every time I hear it. Yes, even more than that one, and that one. But music is never my primary focus on this channel, and the music is far from the only great thing about this opening. It captures the insane, over-the-top, anachronistic violence of Drifters in this monochromatic, half-finished, sketchy animation style that gives the whole thing a heavy metal album cover come-to-life vibe. By stripping away the polish on this animation and emphasizing bright, emotionally charged colors, Drifters makes its imagery feel powerful and raw. I mean, a prop plane gunning down a dragon is already about the most metal thing that can possibly exist, but something about these rough animatics makes it that much more visceral. It also makes it that much more striking when the visuals shift to a more polished, detailed, computer-rendered look to introduce the characters over the chorus. These shots boil down everything that is essential about these characters to one image, and the kinetic camera work that connects each shot makes them feel as intense and exciting as the battle scenes. And the way that the battle scenes pop up when the chorus is over just looks fucking cool. On that note, the chorus also helps. Driving, twisting, turning sideways. Yeah, that's the good shit. As much as I love this song though, in some ways our fourth place entry sounds even better. Hype is just one feeling of many that OPs can convey, and some of the best of the bunch aim to be emotionally charged experiences that just wash over you. 
This can be accomplished with strong conventional direction, as we see in Season 2 of Snow White with the Red Hair, or with the more abstract, metaphorical approach of March Comes In Like a Lion and Grimgar of Fantasy and Ash. I honestly expected I'd be giving this to Yuri on Ice for how it conveys its characters' arcs through wordless figure skating, and that is impressive, but while I love history makers to death, the fact that the OP repeats so many of its animations is a bit of a letdown. And that aside, there's another OP that's so overwhelmingly beautiful that not even Yuri on Ice can compare. Kiznaiver might well be the single most disappointing anime of last year. As a new series from Trigger, hopes were obviously high for it, and not totally unwarranted at first. It started brilliantly and impressed throughout its run with beautiful visuals and fun, memorable characters. But that ending, man... You were the chosen one! But on the other hand, that opening, man... Many of my favorite OPs convey a lot of different ideas in imaginative ways. Kiznaiver's opening, Lay Your Hands on Me by Boom Boom Satellites, focuses on just one, a sense of connectedness with the people around us. The opening notes of the theme song play over symmetrical spinning lights that slowly shift into alignment, revealing a stained glass window with two people holding hands. With the two disparate perspectives aligned, we see the entire world in a new light, zipping through tunnels and down streets in trippy kaleidoscope vision, as though we're seeing it all through multiple sets of eyes at once. When those kaleidoscopes are turned on the beautifully animated character shots, they instead suggest that these characters have dimensions beyond what we initially see of them, and that they are multifaceted people worth exploring. They also suggest that Nico is best girl. Everything about this OP invites you to transcend your singular perspective of the world and see things in a new light. It promises an evocative and enlightening experience, one which the show unfortunately can't deliver on, but Trigger does get points for trying. The money shot, so to speak, encompasses the entire last third of the opening. Zooming into Sonozaki's eye, we see the whole of the city zoom by as rings in her iris, each ring bringing with it a new character until we eventually zoom out the other side through Katsuhira's pupil. This sequence is breathtaking. I get chills every time I watch it, and that is helped a great deal by the theme song, which is tragically the last single that will ever be released by Boom Boom Satellites, but it's the unique abstract visuals that pull it all together. If I had to pick, I'd say that I enjoy Gospel of the Throttle a little bit more as a song, but the interplay between Kiznaiver's visuals and Lay Your Hands on Me, the way that everything speaks to the struggle of searching for a human connection and the incredible power of finding one, just hits me that little bit harder. It's the direction elevating the music, not the other way around. And also, Nico is the best. Of course, that's ultimately going to be beat out by the marriage of top-notch direction and perfect music choice, which puts both a little bit behind our top three entries. And in third place, we've got an opening that just about everyone could have guessed would make this list even back in winter of last year. Erased was a damn good TV show, and it's hard to imagine that someone could come up with an OP better suited to it than Re Re by Asian Kung Fu Generation. It's a small miracle that they use that song at all, considering that the standard practice for anime openings is to buy or commission a single from whatever artist happens to be hot right now and slap it on a new album, not pick a song off an album from 2004, but I'm glad they did. The song's themes are an eerily perfect match for those of the show, and it sounds great to boot. And A1 Pictures really makes full use of those strengths. This OP is packed to the gills with symbolism and features some truly phenomenal storyboarding, editing, and animation. Its frames are busy but never cluttered, and the great direction always draws your eye wherever it needs to be. Every shot has some deeper meaning to it, but even without that context, the individual shots just look incredible. Some of them are almost painterly. And the camera movement really ratchets up the excitement. From this subtle rumble as the water rushes in, to this masterful tracking shot that makes me wonder how the same director gave us this amateur hour bullshit. 
This is that rare example of animation that looks great both in motion and as a desktop wallpaper, no matter where you choose to pause the video to grab that screen. I'm talking at length about the technical achievements of this opening because I've already broken down its artistic merits in exhaustive detail for my What's in an OP video, which I'll link to in the doopley-doo. Yet, even so, I'm still finding new things to admire about its shot composition. Like, in this first shot where the kids are stopped in the hall by Yashiro-sensei, the camera's position behind Kenya's shoulder and the contrast between the black suit on Yashiro and his white jacket creates a sense of confrontation between them, almost like a shot of a standoff from a western film. And as if it wasn't strong enough already, the OP also undergoes a Jojo-esque transformation after the big reveal at the end of episode 10, removing Satoru from every single shot and adding some other creepy details to compensate for his absence. Unlike JoJo's openings, this change is less hype-inducing and more depressing, but it leaves one hell of an impression as episode 11 starts and gets you wondering where the story could possibly go from there. It's a nice, impactful change that makes an already great OP incredible. I expected Erase to make this list from the moment I saw its OP, and that change just cemented its place right near the top of the list. But if there's one show that I never would have pegged as making the cut, it's our second place finisher. Twin Star Exorcists is yet another in a long line of decent, if overlong, battle shonen series that seemingly no one cares about. I say seemingly because despite the fact that no one in the anime community was talking about it at all, it was consistently among the most popular shows on Crunchyroll for the entirety of its 50 episode run. And on top of whatever the story has to offer, the people watching it got to enjoy a quality that I wasn't even aware of until I started doing research for this list. This show has some freaking incredible OPs. Now, the first one is nothing to write home about. It features great animation and a few clever shots, but it's mostly just your average middle-of-the-road shonen OP. So when I first watched it, I didn't expect it to rank any higher than the runners-up for the shonen category. But every opening after the first one is so damn good. The second OP showcases some of the most impressive action animation of the year, to the point where it would be a serious contender against both Drifters and Haikyuu for that hotly contested shonen crown if not for my one OP per series rule. See, the third OP, Sync by Lull, goes so far above and beyond just about everything else this year, all while thoroughly defying easy categorization, that I'd be doing it and the Shonen shows a disservice if I didn't give it its own placement. And just FYI, while the quality dips a bit for the fourth opening that hit this winter, it's gonna take a lot for a Shonen series to unseat it from my 2017 list. But sync, holy crap, where do I begin? It's not easy to capture an emotional arc with abstract imagery, in this case a sense of distance and awkwardness between two people that grows into camaraderie and eventually intimacy. It's also not easy to create hype in just a minute and 30 seconds. You need to employ interesting action and camera movements, pick a fun song, and make sure that every key motion syncs up perfectly with that music. Accomplishing both of these things at once is really something else entirely. Of course, the meaning of this dividing line between our heroes is pretty overt. It's meant to evoke parallels between them while also hyper-emphasizing the differences between them, but there are subtleties to how it's employed. When the action scene starts, the thick dividing line between the two of them disappears, leaving only the contrast of the teal and orange to create an obvious separation between the two scenes. And while that does make the differences between their worlds even more pronounced, the OP plays with the expectations that this creates by having them cross over into each other's scenes multiple times. And the use of that line isn't just about their character dynamics either. It also speaks to the parallels between Earth and the spirit world Magano, and between our reality and that of the gods. 
I love so many parts of this OP. The shot of Fate literally toying with Benio and Rokuro, this shot of zooming down the highway at both midday and midnight, the slick, jerky zoom out and then in that introduces the supporting cast in perfect time with the beat, but I think that the final shot is the most brilliant of them all. For the first time in the OP, we see the two of them together in the frame as they drop into the water. The intensity drops with them, and they're left to calmly float together in a serene world all their own beneath the ocean waves. Which is nice on its own, but then we pan up and see that the horizon is being used to create that same dividing line that has been the motif of the entire OP, only within the actual world of the show. And both of them are now on the same side of it. And then on top of that, you notice that the sun and moon in the sky are the same teal and orange colors that represent the two of them. But the reflection on the water that they're swimming in diffuses that light so that the two colors blend together. This imagery is pure genius. But there's still one opening that stands above it this year. And at number one, I mean, was there any doubt of what would end up here? 2016 was an incredible year for anime openings, but one OP reigns supreme above all others. Wake up, get up, get out there, the opening to Persona 5. What, were you expecting something else after all the Persona music in this video? How could I not give first place to the beautiful, stylized, and eminently catchy intro to one of the greatest games of the last decade? I mean, yes, it is a game, not an anime, but that doesn't discount the artistry and care that Sayo Yamamoto put into crafting it. Besides, what else could I possibly put here? Oh, right, Mob Psycho 100 came out this year. Yeah, that wins. I guess I'm going to have to do a separate video about the Persona openings later. Coming soon to a subscription box near you. After it came in second on my list of the best openings of all time, it should come as no surprise that I think that Mob Psycho 100 is also the best anime opening of 2016. This OP is truly phenomenal. It makes you laugh and gets you pumped all at once with a barrage of crazy imagery that all somehow flows together into a single cohesive whole, helped along by imaginative animation and transitions that seem connect wildly different ideas together. In terms of structure and meaning, the way that this OP goes through this crazy emotional roller coaster only to loop back perfectly to the beginning is very clever and ties in nicely to the structure of the show's plot. And when it comes to music, the show's original theme song, 99 by Mob Choir, kicks at least 99 different kinds of ass, growing on you each time you listen to it with its energetic instrumentation and fun, enthusiastic vocals. This OP impresses on pretty much every level, but what is perhaps the most impressive thing about it is the sheer amount of manga references and foreshadowing that Bones has managed to cram into its minute and 30 seconds of runtime. It seems like every new frame brings with it a new reference or piece of foreshadowing to pick apart, up to and including huge spoilers for parts of the manga that were coming out as the series aired, and possibly even for the current arc about Moe aliens. Of course, you need to know what you're looking for to recognize these references, but even the most seemingly random and bizarre elements of this OP have meaning to them. The animators didn't waste a second in priming you for the wild ride that is Mob Psycho 100. Bones has created a ton of memorable OPs over the years for series that rank among my favorites of all time, and this is the absolute best of the bunch. And the series is just as good, showcasing great storytelling combined with wonderfully inventive animation. If you haven't seen or read Mob Psycho yet, especially if you're a fan of One Punch Man, you owe it to yourself to give it a shot. If for nothing else, do it for the OP which really could be the tagline for this whole channel. At any rate, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this comprehensive look at the best OPs of last year. If you did, hit the like button and share it with your friends so that they too can know the wisdom of the anime Pope. Or if you think I missed something or you have a favorite that you'd rather see on this list instead, you can tell me what it is in the comments below. I promise I won't be mad at you for dissenting. I'll barely even execute you for blasphemy. Also, I promise that next year, I'll get this list out much sooner and hopefully a little shorter, so make sure to subscribe if you want to catch that and all the other nifty anime-related stuff that I make. 
and join my squad of heroes, aka patrons, if you want to assist me in spreading my good anime word to the masses. If you missed part one of this list, you can check that out up here or click down here for my latest OP analysis video. Or you can click in the vicinity of my titties to go to my second channel where I host my podcast, The Weekly Weebcast, where I just had a discussion with Super Bunny Hop and the Pedantic Romantic about Makoto Shinkai's new movie, Your Name. That podcast was fantastic. And you are fantastic. And I am Jeff the Professional Shitbag, signing out from my mother's...